At Direct Service Garage Doors, we are your one-stop shop for all things garage door. From garage door repair and broken spring replacement to new garage doors and openers, we do it all. We're proud to be among the highest rated local garage door companies in all of Central Arkansas. Our highly trained technicians are available 24 hours a day at no extra cost to you. So if you have an emergency, call us today, 501-244-3667, or visit our website at directserviceoverhead.com. Don't wait days, we'll fix it now. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to us talk with Ty. We're here. We're live. We're doing this. I hope you're ready, because I know I am. Three, two, one. Yo, what's going on, Arkansas Razorback fans? SCC fans everywhere. Welcome to the us talk with Ty live stream. Hope you guys have had a fabulous early start to your to your August. We're just now, we're getting into the thick of it, baby. We're getting into the thick of it. Today is the 5th of August. Fall camp begins. Oh, I mean, this is it, man. This is this is Christmas. Christmas in August. Christmas Eve, I guess. And it's going to last all the way up until Arkansas straps up for, for Cincinnati. Arkansas looking to whoop some Cincinnati ass. Come September. I hope you guys are ex- as excited about it as I am because I'm awfully excited about it. I got the new shades. Oh, that's right. The last ones, as you, as many of you are well aware of, they're at the bottom of the Gulf out in Galveston. Some lucky SLB probably has them now because apparently these things are designed to float. I didn't know that. Oh, it's such a good feeling. So I hope whoever finds those shades, those slick shades, that those shades bring them the kind of luck that they brought me. Now we're on. We have evolved into these. It's so fresh and so clean. All right. Could not be here without you guys, Patreon supporters. Now, I I, I do have to start this off with thanking Patreon supporters and also Direct Service Overhead, the Garage Door Company. You guys know, longtime sponsor. Of the uh, of Tus Talk, not gonna lie, reading Discord in dark theme mode with these shades on is a little complicated, but I'm making it work. Uh, direct service overhead. They offer same day services, free estimates, quality parts, affordable outcomes, hundreds of five star reviews, better than best results. Give them a call today at 501 244 3667. Again, that's 501 244 3667. All right, so much to cover. Sam Pittman talked with the media a couple days ago. I've got that entire thing noted out. Um, I, I, I put the uh, presser up on the, on the big screen, on my big TV in the living room. Everybody has one now. They're so cheap. Like, my God, two, three hundred bucks. You've got a pretty decent 60-inch TV. Like, you know, whatever. Sure, it's not a Sony or a LG or a Samsung, whatever. But I was watching Sam Pittman on the big screen taking notes, and I've got this thing broken down. So I'm going to talk about that. Arkansas, we had some Razorbacks play last night in preseason uh, NFL. The Jags and the Raiders. Grant Morgan last night. I don't know if you guys caught this or not. I did not get a chance to watch this. 
but he had three tackles and a sack. Now, he's on the same team with former Razorbacks Mo Brown and Jeremiah Ledbetter. Mo Brown, who I thought I read somewhere, he's worked his way up as the uh, as like second team for the Jags. Listen, we all knew he had it in him. The fact that they've made it this far is saying something. We'll see if they're uh, if they can make the roster and if, if they can advance their careers. But Morgan looked awfully good. I did see the highlight. I thought Morgan looked really good. Let me uh, let me get caught up on chat. I don't know how long I can keep these shades on. I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Uh, welcome, I am Prue. What's going on, man? Scott Swindle, Matt, Jeff Brown. I'm ready, Ty. So am I, Jeff. So am I. Ty probably gonna video the practice for us. So that is the other exciting announcement. I, your boy, Ty Hudson, will be at the practice today with full press credentials. Oh, that's right. Yeah. All that hard work, baby. It's paying off. It's paying off. That's what I'm talking about. Full press credentials. Full. Yeah. Hmm. It's exciting. It's exciting times. No longer do I have to read about it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. I will still do plenty of reading. But I'll get to see it from my own eyes. We know that the first two days of of, of camp, they're going to be in uh, shorts and shirts with helmets for the first couple of days. And I think after that, they're going to shoulder pads and shorts maybe with helmet. I'm not really sure. Michael Kapaski, yo, what's poppin' Ty? It's Friday and less than 30 days away. It's closing in. Austin, what's up, Austin? There's a moderator from our Discord. How you doing, man? Austin Foster. It's football season, ladies and, gen- and gents. Let's go. Listening to uh, McElroy dump all over the hogs this morning on WJOX is something I hope finds the ears in that locker room in favor of a woo damn pick. Me and you both. I didn't know about that. I'd like to hear that. Do me a favor, guys. Make sure you like the stream. Share the content, please, if you would, and subscribe if you haven't already. Yes, I do operate this page. I am the founder, creator, host of Tusk Talk. This page is full go. But I am splitting responsibilities with this page and with Hogville Net. And uh, some exciting news coming with Hogville Net, actually. Myself and uh, the one and only Kevin McPherson are going to be covering Arkansas basketball while they're in Europe. So we're going we're gonna to get us that subscription to Flow Sports for these four games. I know he is for sure. I can't solidify if I am or not, but regardless, the guy that matters that's going to watch this is Kevin McPherson. So we're going to do a pregame postgame on August 1st, uh, excuse me, August 9th. That's game one. That's the only game we're doing a pregame for. We're not doing a pregame for the other three games. That's going to have a pregame, which will start 30 minutes before tip-off. We're probably going to talk for about 15 to 20 minutes. We don't have a lot of info on these other on this other team. But Kevin's going to get you. He's going to give you the lowdown on what he thinks you're going to probably see and kind of what to look for from Arkansas. But that starts tip offs at 12:30. We'll go live at noon on August 9th, August 11th, uh, 13th and 15th. They're all post game shows only. August 11th is a 1:30 tip off. August 13th is a 12:30 tip off. And I was corrected by Kevin on uh, the last video he and I did together. Muscleman put out the wrong graphic. Game four, August 15th, is not 12.30. It's 12 p.m. So we will be live for post game on that. Let me get, I'm, I'm going to keep reading your chat here. I'm going to keep reading the comments. What up, Ty? Whoop, well, hang on. Where'd it go? My screen. Hold up. <laughs> I almost said picture on network. When did, oh, did I? In my intro, did I sitting here with my four year old watching Ty live? I'll I'll watch my I'll watch my language, Zach. Thanks for being here, man. Appreciate it. I tell you what else is cool today. Drink. Uh, I I tell you what else is cool. What else is cool day drinking on? Yeah, you're clearly drinking, Scott. Hey, have one on us, brother. Gerard Collins, what's up, man? The future's so bright. Ty has to wear the shades. That's right. You are correct. What up, Frederick Clemens? How you doing, my man? <laughs> you looking playing with them shades. Aren't they fresh, man? I am from the 90s, if you couldn't tell. 
Uh, so fresh and so clean, clean. Michael sees it. Kapeski sees it. Okay, I'm trying to get caught up. Ty, been, uh, Ty I'm dying. I've been, I've been dying all summer for news. Well, we've got a lot to discuss with this Sam Pittman stuff, what he had to say with the media. It's pretty incredible. Leslie Byram, I don't know how true it is, but I heard KJ Jefferson sprained his ankle pretty bad on one of those scooters that are electron- electronically motored. Have you heard anything? I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to add. I have not heard anything. That's news to me. I have been uh, dealing with my kiddos all day. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm also dealing with some other stuff with our ceiling. May have to have some work done. So I have not had time to get caught up with, the, uh, with anything from the Razorbacks. Obviously, later today I will. I probably – I don't know what the media availability is going to look like as far as um, – you know, when Sam, I don't know if, actually, I don't know who he's talking. I don't know who's talking today. I have the, I have the calendar for the media, but, uh, I'm probably just going to be there for practice just to watch them and then probably leave. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Otis Kirk. I think Otis and Dudley are going to be there today. Um, so they may give me some, they may ask me to do something for them and, and whatever I, I, I will, uh, I'm at their exposure. They're, they're disp- I'm, at the, I'm at their disposal is what I meant to say. Uh, we do it 7F. I don't know what you're talking about, Gary. You're going to have to help me out, brother. Congrats, Ty. I appreciate that, Philip. Yeah, man. It's big. It's big. All right. Um, I'll get back to chat here in a minute. Let's get started, right? Let's do this. Let's knock it out the park. I wanted to give you guys plenty of time to get in here um, and, and get caught up. Yeah, basketball is on Flow Sports. That's correct. Flow Sports, I, I don't know. And, yeah, I'm totally going to write it off, Austin. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it off. Um, but it is available. I think it's like 30 bucks if you want to watch those games. Sunday it shows them playing at 3 a.m. So, again, the times that I have and that Kevin McPherson, I'm not sure it gets much better than Kevin McPherson. The times he has are local. You might be looking at – there are times I don't know. There's also there's always a possibility that mistakes have been made, but as far as I know, uh, that is not the case. Why is saying Hornsby makes may take Jefferson Jefferson spot? So I've I've had people ask me this. I may have missed that. I, I don't know. I, um, I don't know that he ever said that. I, well, okay, he did say that, but I think the context was, and he's talked about that before where he's not discussing that that like it's a for sure thing but it's just kind of it's more or less coach speak right i think he wants to throw it out there that kj's job isn't 100% secure for the sake of you know cuz if he comes out and he says well this is kj's job uh, 100% maybe this year he gets the vibe that if he does that i don't know maybe that has some kind of impact on the roster i don't know I have heard – I've had two other people bring this up to me. And, and, again, I must have missed when he actually said those words. But I have read in other places that he said something along those lines. KJ is not in any danger of losing his job. I, I, that, would be, that would be the biggest shock. That would probably be the biggest shock in the SEC. Because Malik Hornsby, last we saw, did not look the part. Now, we're going to get into Malik Hornsby on this. Again, make sure you share the content, like, subscribe, ask questions. I promise I, I try my best to keep up. Uh, you guys are awfully active today, and I, I'm, I do my best to try to balance reading comments and trying to stay on task, but that's challenging because you guys know how I be. I like to, I like to um, keep you guys – I like you guys to be interactive with the show. You are a part of this show in a way, absolutely. Uh, CBS Sports has Arkansas ranked 16th preseason playing Baylor in the Sugar Bowl. I'll take that season. Hell yeah. Yeah, if you're playing Sugar Bowl, that's 10 wins, right? Or close to it. Nine or 10 wins. Sugar Bowl feels like 10 wins. All right. We're caught up on everything else. Let's get right into it. Sam Pittman started off talking about the running backs. He was asked about them. He said that... uh, They are a running back by committee like most other teams, right? Uh, Rocket Sanders will be getting majority of the carries. That's not exactly groundbreaking news there. We we knew that. That was probably going to be the case. 
I thought it was interesting he brought up uses keeping bodies fresh. We're talking about the rotation among running backs to recruit with. Dominic Johnson is ahead of schedule for his for his um, for for him to, to be on track. May not be available for Cincinnati. Dominic Johnson may not be available for Cincinnati. That's from that's from Sam's own own words. Could be available and should be available after that. I mean, they are you are really threading the needle on that one. Uh but going back to his recruiting of running backs, I like the way he does that. He uses keeping bodies fresh to recruit running backs. Now we know they have just one running back right now currently committed to the University of Arkansas for the twenty twenty three class. Augustive, the kid out of Florida who just recently got his fourth star from 247 Sports. Big time back. Uh, to me, he is a uh, he's one you have to keep. He's a priority target. He has told them, you are our only running back. We're not recruiting anybody else. You're it. We have no one else committed unlike Florida, unlike some of those other schools in that region that are, that are actively committing or uh, uh, going after his commitment. So Augustav, they have got to hang on to. But this is, so you know, when they're talking to Augustav, it's like, look, man, yeah, you're not going to get 25 carries a game, but no running back is. And he's right. If you look at the average running back in, in college football, average starting running back is lucky to get 20, 21, 22 carries. That didn't used to be the case, right? Back in the day, everybody ran the ball 25, a minimum of 20 to 25 times. Everybody ran the ball You had your air raid, you had your fancy air raid or pro style offenses, and even the pro style offenses ran the ball a lot more. Now we know Arkansas is running back by committee, and yet Rocket Sanders is one of the most talked about true sophomore running backs coming into the SEC West. He's one of the most talked about. Dominic Johnson, folks know he's dangerous, right? We all know that. A.J. Green's got that blazing track speed. He may not be the fastest player on the roster, but he's in that he's in that discussion. And he used that same motive or that same whatever you want to call it, uh, approach to recruiting running backs. He used the same thing on them. He said, "Look, I'm keeping you guys fresh. I'm, you're not going to get 25 carries a game. It's going to be running back by committee because that's the majority of college football today." And again, he's right. So I love it. I love that he came out and he said that. Um, Sam is the kind of guy, sometimes you feel like the media has to dig in on questions and you know, that's just, that's fine. I'm okay with him being that way. Ask the question. He's not going to just come out and tell you what he can't read your mind. Right. Again, Dominic Johnson, he's ahead of schedule, but may not, it doesn't look like at the moment, we know this could also change in three weeks at the moment. He doesn't look prepared to, uh, to go for Cincinnati. Let me read comment here for just a second now. Uh, my sister and my nephews are going to the Bama game. Oh, that's exciting. It's the illusion that there's truly a quarterback competition. Yeah, I, I think some of that it is. It's a morale thing too. I think he he wants those guys behind him to feel like they might have an inkling of a shot. Right. Uh, Chaos says, can we not wrap KJ in a bubble until season starts? For the love of God, if KJ gets hurt. Uh, I'll have to take under seven and a, seven and a half. If KJ gets hurt, I'm I'm. Oh boy! I mean, based on even even what Sam Pittman had to say about him and what he had to say about Fortin, I I don't I don't know that I would put Arkansas in the category of going bowling. I just don't. I don't know. I do think the defense is going to be better. Your offensive line is. You're going to have. You're going to you're going to be solid in the rushing game still, but you're not going to be the same in the rushing game. I don't know. Maybe you're a little bit more electric because Hornsby's faster. But Hornsby throwing the ball struggled last year. We're all we're all well aware of that. Um. Oh, I just got a DM. Ty, you didn't share on Facebook anywhere. Oh, you're right. I didn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks for thank you for that. Um, I did not share on Facebook anywhere. But again, the approach is 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 um, how you handle 
how you handle keeping everybody happy is also going to be a challenge. And, you know, and I thought it was interesting, too. Pittman talked about managing your roster is now one of the hardest things. I think he actually said it's the hardest thing to do now. It's difficult to manage the roster. We also found out Dax Courtney, he's done. He's retiring. So now you're under your scholarship limit. I think it's uh, they're at 83 now. So you have that news as well, and that's kind of what led you know that led to him talking about how difficult it is to manage how to manage a roster and then keeping everybody happy. These things are just it's tough to do. Yeah, I got your mess. I got it. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm I'm putting it there now. I promise you I am. I'm putting it there now. There you go. Got it on one place. I got it on Hog Sports. Um, Super Chat is up and active. If you guys want to join Patreon, listen, this page... Uh, I'll just go ahead and throw it out there. I don't, I haven't talked with my sponsor about making this public just yet, but our sponsor is going to be moving to Hogville. So direct service overhead. We, we've got some things we're going to, we're going to hash out. We're going to get some stuff talked about. I don't know if I'm going to be able to bring on more sponsors for this page or not. It's going to be very heavily reliant on Patreon. This channel is going to be very reliant on Patreon. Got to grow the Patreon here. Definitely, because ads are not going to be here. Sponsorship, I don't think. I mean, again, it's still early. I'll talk with uh, my boy. I'll talk with my boy, Travis, about it. Um, But he's going to be moving. Direct Service Overhead will be the uh, an official one of the official sponsors for uh, Hogville Net YouTube. Rashad W. (coughs) I can't ever pronounce his last name right. Was getting complimented by Pittman. He was. He has. He has. He has a couple of times. He has. You're absolutely right. Hang on. Getting it put up there, too. I know. <gasps> How dare you? I think, you know, yeah, it's it's keeping everyone happy. Because the portal, it's a mess. You know, and like Pittman also said, you benefit from it. You also, you, you well, I think what he was saying is you kind of live by the portal, you die by the portal, and now there's no limitations, right? Now you have, you just get to fill out your roster. Uh, I get the sense that fall is in the air. Uh, I like your glasses tight. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm going to keep them on this whole stream. I'm going to try to. Uh, do the basketball hogs really have a chance to really come home with the championship? Be realistic. Do they have what it takes? Yes. Be realistic. Trey, have you have you kept up with recruiting, my man? Do you know how huge it was getting Devo to come back? You ought to hear Kevin McPherson talk about Devo and how important that is. And I'm not just saying that because I work with, with Kevin McPherson. Talking with him and listening to the other basketball. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. ACS is calling me in the middle of the live stream. Uh, these are the... Oh, my God. Sorry, I got to ignore your call. Um... Yeah, you ought to listen to Kevin McPherson and I break down. Well, it's it's mostly Kevin. It's all Kevin. Listen to those Hogville Net videos and what he has to say about that. Listen to his to what he understands and what he knows of this team. There's probably not someone as dialed in as Kevin McPherson, uh, and I, I've always thought that to be the case. I think he is the number one basketball source for Razorback basketball fans. Listen to what he has to say, Trey. It is a realistic possibility. Let's get back to football, though. Um, will most posts will most posts go to the Hogville channel? But the lives will stay here. So it's we're kind of Tony at the moment. We're just kind of playing it by ear. I'm doing these lives. I want it. My goal is two lives here a week. But I'm also going to be doing lives with Hogville, and those are going to include people like. Otis Kirk, Dudley Dawson, and also Kevin McPherson. So it's going to be a mix. <laughs> it's a lot of work for me, <laughs> which is why, please God, if uh, you know the algorithm works in in uh, in my favor, both these channels do really well during all that. 
Uh, love the Hogville content, Ty. Keep it up. I appreciate that. A lot of hard work goes into that. I'm not going to lie. That is – edited content takes me – It. I struggle with edited content. I do. It, it takes me two hours to get a, a six-minute video done because, you know, you got to do the Photoshop. You got to do the editing. Live content that we do or, like, when I interview somebody, there's not a whole lot of editing. That doesn't take as long. But, like, those short little eight-minute, seven, six-minute videos take forever. Uh, listening to Kevin talk basketball is like a kid telling you he has a new toy. I'm telling you, man, there's just, and I'm going to tell you something else. Everyone else, not all of them. There are some really good basketball people out there, but a lot of them, there's, there's a lot of them. They're not, it's, I'll just say this. Kevin's typically first. He's typically the first one there. Uh, just remember Corliss was a sophomore. He won blah, 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 blah. If we stay healthy and beat Bama, do we make it to Atlanta? A lot of questions there because you have to deal with, what is it, six weeks? It's six weeks this year until you get a bye week, right? It's six weeks. Last year, I think it was eight. You've got to go through the grind. This is a – there are no weeks off during the season. And I know that that's their approach. I know that's their approach no matter the opponent, but still. Sam on Malik Hornsby's role in the offense. Clearly, he can't play both wide receiver and be the backup quarterback, or can he? But Sam said this, we need him on the field. And what afforded them the ability to do this, to move Malik Hornsby out to wide receiver a little bit, is their confidence in Cade Fortin. Uh, Sam did reference Hornsby as his number two quarterback, uh, number two quarterback at one point during his presser. He also said he's night and day better than where he was at last year as a quarterback. Talking about, of course, talking about Malik Hornsby. I didn't know this either, and Sam gave us a little bit on on uh, on KJ and Hornsby's relationship. Apparently, when Hornsby went into the portal, KJ was the biggest one. Those are his exact words. The biggest one trying to get him back, getting him out of the portal. This is the biggest question. I, and I, I, you know, it's not a red flag situation because if he's not playing wide receiver at the moment, I don't view that as a, as a problem until we look at the rest of the receivers as the season goes on, right? If Malik Hornsby goes out against Cincinnati, if Malik Hornsby goes out against Cincinnati, catches seven, eight balls, Hunter, you know, he's going to go, he's just going to garble up. He's, he's going to have so many yards. If he has, if he's north of six catches and he's under a hundred yards, you're doing something wrong. Kendall Bryles. There's just too much electricity with, with Malik Hornsby. If he goes out and he blows the doors off the hinges against Cincinnati and no other receiver steps up as the years, as the year goes on, as the weeks go by, then yeah, it's, it's a red flag if he's not out there more, right? Or it's a confidence thing, maybe in KJ. Maybe they're a little shaky about KJ, and they don't want to get him. They don't want to risk Hornsby getting hurt. I could see that playing out. But this is the most interesting part of the off season. This is the most interesting part of fall camp. This is the most interesting question that we have going in to the regular season. Does Arkansas know what they want to do? Does Kendall Browse and Sam Pittman? It seems to me like they're playing this thing by ear, but they feel like they're leaning towards him being a wide receiver. And yet, he still referenced him as QB2. Maybe it's that, well, we feel fine with risking Malik Hornsby out there because of Fortin's progress. I think he mentioned I think he mentioned something that Fortin did during the spring camp. He was a little vague on that. He, he, he talked about a specific event that happened that made them have confidence about him coming in as the... Uh, is the guy if Millie Corns being KJ Jefferson get hurt? Although again, those weren't his exact words. But that is again, that's the biggest question: is how the hell do they get Hornsby on the field alongside KJ Jefferson? How do you get those two on the field at the same time? And I got to tell you, that is appealing. It's appealing to everybody who's who's kept up with this whole thing for the last couple of years. I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is because we just haven't seen it enough. There were questions about can he catch the ball. Otis Kirk and I talked about that. We've talked about it several times when he and I have done these interviews. You know, um, we'll see. How well does he understand the routes? 
Is he going to be, is it just going to be a situational, is he going to be treated like how Houston Nutt treated the Wildcat back in 06? Is it going to be that same thing where, oh, it's working, we're going to keep using it? Is it, are they going to treat it like they do the double pass? Golly, just saying that aggravates me until we see that actually work. It's the biggest question. I don't think there's any doubt because the potential's there and we're all very well aware if this thing works, holy cow. If this works, if if KJ Jefferson and Malik Hornsby are a dynamic duo along with those running backs, along with Trey Knox working out at tight end, maybe a receiver or two kind of stepping up along with that, you know, maybe Katron Jackson, this offense is going to be unstoppable. But then there's the risk that it doesn't really work. Malik Hornsby gets hurt. KJ Jefferson's forced to play a little banged up. They're telling us that Fortin's the they feel good about Fortin operating this offense, but how would that really look? I don't know. A lot of a lot of questions here. Sam also talked about injuries. Uh, Torn Carter and some other people. This is what he had to say about Torn Carter. Uh, TC will be in fall camp. Doesn't mean he's going to be active, but we thought it was important that, uh, that he was at camp. Sam wants him to be a part of everything. Wants him in the film room, wants him on the field. Uh, Renfro has not been cleared. You guys remember Renfro. He's not been cleared to participate in fall camp. Although it sounds like he could possibly be cleared to some level, maybe as the year goes on. I, don't, I really don't know. Renfro's kind of a wait-and-see thing, I think. Uh, Manny Powell, Landon Jackson, I think are good to go. He was asked, and I, he never really cleared up Manny Powell. It sounds to me like they're fine. They're going to play. And what he said about Cam Ball was also really interesting. So he kind of let something slip. Maybe it wasn't a slip as much as a... They haven't talked about it a whole lot, unless I missed it, which is possible. They are going to run a multiple front. It, it, they're going to have a three-man front and a four-man front. And the reason why we know this, he said this clear, Cam Ball will be a starting interior defensive tackle in the forefront. In the three front, he's a second He's second team. It's probably going to be like last year. We saw it last year where they kind of trickled in. I think it was against Auburn where they went majority four-man front where they looked like a 4-2, like they had a front six, you know, with a roaming safety playing near the box. Uh, I think that's going to – I think that's what they're going to be doing. Uh, maybe we see a little bit more of a four-man front. But he talked about all the new additions. I think he mentioned um, – oh, the kid from – I'm blanking on his name. I don't have the roster pulled up. The kid from uh, Georgia Tech. Someone I – haven't, I, I haven't needed anybody to bail me out this whole show, and now I need – Jordan Dominic. Is that, is that who I'm thinking of? Uh, I believe he mentioned Jordan Dominic, these new additions. I wonder if they feel a little bit more confident to run a majority four-man front. But the fact that he mentioned Cam Ball as a starter in the four-man front, it tells you two things. Cam Ball is exactly where we thought he would be at this point in his career. And it sounds to me like they do want to flirt a little bit more of the four-man front, which is so exciting. Uh... Let's see. I hate that Dominic won't be ready week one. Yeah, I, I I know, Ash. That's I was really hoping he'd – but what this does mean, A.J. Green's going to get an opportunity. You're probably going to see a couple of names you wouldn't think of um, get in the – well, I say you wouldn't think of. We're all very well aware of who these running backs are. Last year in the tight end room, Blake Kern was really the blocking tight end and Knox was the catching tight end. Who do you see as replacing Kern? So – at the moment, I mean, Sam Pittman made it sound like they've got a plethora of tight ends, and he's not wrong. They've got they've they've got quite a few. My guess is probably Nathan Bax. If I had to guess, probably Nathan. But that's a guess. That's just me, kind of just throwing that out there. I I don't know. They they are loaded with tight ends. Um, I don't know. Like they and they've got some walk ons. You've got Tay, uh, Ty Washington, freshman. Little light, I think he's six four. I don't know his, what his updated weight is, but he's listed on their roster as of as as of today at six four two twenty one. So I don't know if he's really your blocking. Uh, Aaron Outley's two hundred and seventy pounds, but we haven't heard from Aaron Outley. He's going to be someone I'm 
going to try and find today. I'm going to try and keep an eye on him. Uh, Nathan Johnson is not a blocking tight end at 6'4", 212. Uh, Colin Sutherland, 6'5", 253. Hudson Henry's 257. But Nathan Back, 6'4", 260. And he's also been a name that's been talked about a little bit. And uh, I think he ran with a mix of the ones and twos in spring camp, if I remember right. So my guess is Nathan Backs, but that right now is just a guess. Um, still have Huddy right at tight end. Yep, you do. Injury prone. You can't look at that dude without him getting hurt. And I hate that for him. Tusky 6693 says Henry needs to come on at tight end now, now or never. Yeah. Yeah, this is it, man, because the competition's brewing, and you've got this 2023 class that's loaded up with tight ends, even if they're not all going to play tight end. So, Torrin Carter is a little bit. He's, he's still not expected to play at the moment, but it sounds like, I don't, you know, again, unless I missed it, I don't think Sam sees him as someone who's going to, I don't know. He didn't lead me to believe that, that Torrin was out for the year. I'll say that. But remember, when this happened, when that injury happened in spring camp, I think it was like the second play from the line of scrimmage in, in the red-white, the red-white scrimmage that we got to see. It was like the second play, I think, and he went down. That wasn't really all that long ago. All right. I did a video. Oh. I feel vindicated to a degree. I did it. Watch out, Studio Light. Don't get in my face. Get out. I feel somewhat vindicated. I put the wide receivers in the red flag video for Hogville Net YouTube. I had two people in my DMs and some other comments here and there did not agree with me doing that. Sam Pittman himself comes out and says he called the position, and I put this in all caps, the biggest question mark on the team. What else do I, what else does it take? I I told people. I had someone tell me, well, I wouldn't say it's a red flag. Well, what else do you call it? You got Sam telling you himself. I, I don't know what, this is a question mark. It's a big question mark. You don't have Traylon Burks. Now, I do agree with him that that room, here's what's funny. That room has a shh crap ton. I know, I don't know if Zach's still in here, but I want to be PG. He's got his kids watching, so I'm going to be PG. I'm going to honor Zach. I like Zach. Um, Zachary Hall, the one and only. Go follow him on Twitter. He's the guy that's telling you if you got a tornado coming to you. I got you, Zach. If you're still in here, I'm not going to swear. Uh, but you feel pretty darn good about that wide receiver room with the talent that's there. But Arkansas's had there there have been years where you felt great about the talent, and yet the position didn't do anything. They still struggled. That doesn't mean anything. We're in a see it to believe. You know, I need to see it to believe it. Let's see them do it consistently. If they go out against Cincinnati, and I don't know, Katron Jackson. Warren Thompson, whoever, some receiver has, you know, 12 catches, 162 yards, three touchdowns. Great. That's awesome. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Let's be consistent. Let's not sit here and be like, oh, well, look, he had one great week, Ty. I told you. I'm not, again, I, <laughs> if you guys have heard me talk about the receiver, the receiver, the job that Justin Stepp has done. There, well, did, I should say, as a recruiter, was incredible. Unfortunately, a lot of those guys, TQ Jackson and the rest, you know, they kind of am sprayed, but there's still, they're still guys here, right? Trey Knox, I think, could be a star at tight end in the receiving game. He's, he could be a star. Could be a stud. Could be the next, you know, Chris Gregg, DJ Williams type. Could put up some pretty good numbers. Jeremy Sprinkle had some pretty good numbers. Uh, a lot of potential there. But... I, I, the potential in the receiving room is nice. It's, it is, it is, it's as high as it's ever been. But we don't know what we're getting out of Jaden Hazelwood. Katron Jackson, who was playing a little banged up last year, did come in and have, you know, made some plays as a true freshman. You know, you've got Isaiah Centennial, and I'm going to talk about him here in a second, too. I can't wait. I'm so excited for Isaiah. Um, 
I think the, the, the ceiling is freaking high. I, we just we have to see it on a consistent basis. Because the last two years, it's been Traylon Burks and really nobody else. Mike Woods kind of had his moments. Of course, he transferred. And then last year, no one stepped up. Not really. Not on a consistent week-to-week basis when you needed somebody. That's why KJ, on even design throws, not coming out of the RPO, not coming out of the RPO, on design throws, if he couldn't find trail on Burks, he was ducking and running. And I've talked with I've talked with QB Spotlight about this. He said the same thing. There's no one else getting open. So the promise is there. We just need to see it. Look, again, if they do it two, three weeks in a row, I'll take them right off. At the moment, I'm sticking them with red flag. They've got to prove me wrong. And not even wrong. I, like I said, I, I I had a hard time putting them on that list. But simply because of the potential, that room is loaded. Somebody's got to step up and somebody's going to be the man. Uh, don't sleep on AJ Green now. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, AJ is going to be a baller. AJ is going to be good. I hope he's patient if he doesn't get as many uh, attempts. I don't know. I'm still high on Jaden Hazelwood. I think he's that dude for sure. No swag. I hear you. I do. I, I'm high on all these guys. But, you know, Hazelwood didn't exactly blow the world up in, in Oklahoma. He has proven to be somewhat injury prone. Talking with some OU fans, I'm telling you, they're not crying over his departure. And that's not a diss on him. That's just what he wasn't able to accomplish over there. Uh, and that, and it's Oklahoma. They've got plenty of talent at wide receiver. I mean, you know, I get it. But uh, Katron Jackson didn't make as big of a splash as a freshman as we would like to have seen, considering no one else really stepped up. Tyson Morris had his moments, but Morris is gone, right? You're, how much of your receiving production is gone from a year ago? Oh, I don't know, just about all of it. So you see, like, when you make the case, like, ah, uh, I get it, I get it. Otis Kirk said the same thing. Unfortunately, I had to edit that part out, but ask him. Hey, Ty put them on the red flag. What, what do you think? Actually, I'm probably going to talk to him tonight or tomorrow. Well, I know I'm going to talk to him at camp today, but I'm gonna, we're probably going to sit and uh, do an interview for Hogville maybe tomorrow. Uh, Katron Jackson, Thompson, Knox, Centennial, Bryce Stevens, Jaden Wilson, Samuel Mac, uh, 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 Mbake, and Quincy McAdoo. Yeah, those are all great names, but they got to prove something, right? They got to see it. There have been years when that receiving room was had really good talent and no one nothing really came of it. But it helps when you have a quarterback like KJ, too. Uh, I do believe this is a 10-win team, and I do believe we can beat Alabama with a loud Fayetteville crowd. I, something else that I discussed with um, some other media individuals that were not with Hogville a few months back, uh, something that was in a group chat, is, is Alabama, is beating Alabama – on the table, at the very least for Arkansas, and I said absolutely. Is it within reach? I, I mean, we'll see. I, I right now, you know, with that being in Fayetteville, it's not neutral site, and it's not in Tuscaloosa. Like, yeah, I, I think it's just because of that, it's within reach. We'll know who this team is by the time they play Bama. We'll know who's. I mean, we already have a pretty good idea of who Bama is by the by the time we play them, but. Um, yeah, we're going to know a lot about these two teams by the time they meet up in Fayetteville. Of course, staying healthy matters more for Arkansas than it does Alabama. That's the luxury that's afforded to being an Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, to being in th- that football. That's the luxury they can afford over there. We can't afford that here. You know, yeah, if they use, if they lose Bryce Young, yeah, they're up the creek for sure. Right, because now you're you're going to ask someone with very limited experience to step in. But at other positions, no, they'll be fine. Yeah, you know, they've got all Americans up and down the roster. And by the way, we always say quality depth matters. Well, it does. It matters, and Bama has it all. So Arkansas, it is so important. And the same thing could be said of fall camp and getting ready for Bama. It's like you've got whoever's the healthy. If these teams are both 100% healthy, I still think it's on the table for Arkansas. Is it within reach? We'll find out. But I think it's on the table, absolutely. Uh, I can't wait till we play Oklahoma in favor. Yeah. Uh, Katron will have a breakout year. You know what? He had a breakout year on NCAA Fort, uh, well, NCAA revamped for me. He was my All-American. He had like 70 catches. <laughs> 
And I didn't mess with his ratings. I am big on him, though. Very highly uh, wanted player after, um, uh, of course, he committed to Arkansas, but Texas, we all know, wanted him pretty badly. But Katron, Will says Katron will have a breakout year and Jaden Hazelwood becomes one of KJ's favorite targets. Jaden will take Burks' spot. Not saying he will be Burks, but he could be the big body guy who uh, who can out big them. Sure. Yeah, I, 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 I get. Yeah, you're 100% right, Will. You're 100% right. That could absolutely happen. First off, we've not really seen two receivers break out in this offense. Because they're a power, they're they're really yeah they're RPO it's veer and shoot sure but really at the end of the day it's a power run offense that's what it is it's uh and and it's you know they don't throw a lot so it's rare to see two receivers really break out but I hear what you're saying Katron could have the breakout year and Hazelwood someone that you can rely on you know maybe on those third and five third and six downs where they're stacking the box they're anticipating the run you run the RPO you fake the give you toss up a 50-50 jump ball you know six seven yards downfield off a short hitch route and you're expecting Hazelwood to come down with it maybe that's him he's got the body he's got the frame maybe that's Knox lining him up somewhere at wide receiver I'm sure that's going to happen even though he's moved to tight end um, I'm still calling 10 wins, but truth is with our schedule, we could, we could be a better team than last year and still go seven and five. That is, you just hit the nail on the head. You could be a better team than a year ago and, and finish with less wins because of how brutal this schedule is. You're exactly right. Do you agree with, uh, with what Pittman said when Trey Biddy asked him about how other teams lo- Oh yeah, 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 yeah. About how Razorbacks. Not really seeing them as a threat. Yeah, I think what Trey was alluding to was that Sam Pittman has that all shucks, good old boy. Everybody likes the good old boy, you know, the blue collar. I I think that's what Biddy was getting at. And Yeah, I mean, Sam's right. You can't control other people's narratives of what you are other than to just go out and play the game. You know, Sam talked about how he – he does. He has no beef with with Saban and and uh, uh, Jimbo and all that. He's he said I like them all. I like all these coaches, but you know I think some of that might even be by design. Uh, I I think he likes for teams to kind of. I mean, there's no doubt he likes being the underdog, and he has no problem with people tre- or thinking of him as the all shucks. Oh boy, you know. I'm just a coach down here in Fayetteville. I think he likes that people think of him like that because they're going to underestimate how dangerous the team this team really is. I absolutely, yeah, I, I, I guess I agree with that. Uh, Sam Pittman is down to earth, like my father, somebody you can believe in. That, that's what makes him great. Yeah, he he doesn't oversell and uh, under deliver. He doesn't over promise and under deliver. Right, he. I mean, he is what he is, right? Sam Pittman is a humble guy. Yeah, I think he's he's really humble. All right, uh, he did talk about Isaiah Centennial. Very good ball skills, can separate. He mentioned that like two or three times about his ability to create separation and is exactly what we thought he would be. Really smart, learns fast. Matt Landers, he said, was a big physical guy. Obviously, he knows him from the Georgia days. Uh, he says he can fly. And he's helped make guys in front of him better. Switching a little bit here, we're kind of, I had to kind of go back and rewind a little bit and rewatch some things. He talked about Tykees Crawford. Tykees is going to stay on the right side of the offensive line. He was also mentioned at left tackle, but sees him playing either guard or tackle. We'll see how that plays out. It, It could be one of those years where we feel like, oh, well, we know what the offensive line is going to be. And then when they strap up and, 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 and they get the pads on, they roll out against Cincinnati, assuming – or, I mean, because we also saw this the last two years where he would release a depth chart, and then the depth chart wasn't what they rolled out there with, right? We could see that happening. We could absolutely see them Saturday, uh, September, whatever – what is it, the 4th? Th- whatever they play Cincinnati that first week in, in September – I can see them roll out with a completely, you know, outside of Ricky Stromberg, you know, uh, we could see two or three different faces on the offensive line where we're going, oh, 
Oh, okay. All right. So now they're going to start Tykees Crawford at left tackle. Okay. I can see that happening. And he did mention Tykees at left tackle. I'm telling you guys, there's so much here. Pittman on speed and strength compared to a year ago. He says we're bigger, uh, and we look like an SEC team now. I like our team speed. He mentioned that uh, six foot three, three hundred five pound redshirt junior Bo Limmer has stood out in the weight room. Called him a freak of nature type guy. He stood out. And then Sam talked about special teams, punt return and kick return. He said uh, Bryce Stevens, Jaden Hazelwood. I'm surprised by that. And Slusher could be guys we're looking at in punt return. And then starting kick return names that were mentioned was Bishop, A.J. Green, Centennia. Um, all those guys are possible. Sam also said the staff tossed the idea of Rocket Sanders returning kicks. He said he threw his name completely out. He will not be returning kicks, and that is the right approach. I agree. Uh, Sam talked about the starting punter. Max, I guess I guess he's starting Punter, punter, I don't know. Max Fletcher says he can kick the ball 20 miles high. Right now, we're trying to get him to punt the ball to a specific spot. Sam also mentioned that they were a little concerned about, about him out-kicking coverage. So when you hear that type of stuff, that means this kid's got a hell of a leg. It means he's got a hell of a leg. And again, the first two practices will be without pads. September 3rd. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate that, Mr. Henderson. Um, Jordan Dominic player to start. Uh, he will play. I feel like he'll. I don't know. I'll have to get back to you on that. I, I'm. I still don't. I really don't know what that defensive line is going to look like because you still got Landon Jackson, who I think is healthy. Long body, long frame, pretty strong for a guy that size. Has a little bit of uh, quickness off the line of scrimmage as soon as the ball snapped. You feel like he's someone who's just got so much potential. And he's had a really, I mean, he's only had one year, right, at this level. So he understands this level, but he hasn't played at this level enough, right? He's not been around it as much as you would like. We're not talking about some two-year starter at LSU, you know, so there's a lot of questions with a couple of these, you know, with the, with the transfers along the defensive line. I know they're still big on a, on a couple of these OG names, right? But now you've got Cam Ball, who they're talking about will be a starter with a four man front. Yeah, um, we'll just have to wait and see. I, I'm I'm big on Jashad Stewart. He showed flashes. He did. You're right, Will. He absolutely did. William Phillips says, "Talk forever, Ty. Stun the like." Yeah, make sure you subscribe and and all that good stuff, right? I feel like there's some more. There's so much more to discuss, I feel like, but I will be at camp today. I will be there. Your boy's going to be there. It's pretty it's a pretty special moment for me. I want to talk about that really quick. Um I I've been doing this for a while. And this past year, I'm going to say this, uh, even the things that didn't necessarily turn out great that I've done over the years, working on, well, being a co-creator of, a, of another podcast, uh, going through the name change here, going deciding to go from edited content to mostly live to then nothing but live coverage. You know, we're, good Lord, I mean, we're creeping up on a million total views. I don't do highlights. It's just me and my fat mouth talking. That's all this is. I don't create highlights. Uh, you know, there, it's really only a f- two of us that do this, myself and Trey Biddy. Trey, of course, is a big name, but there's only a couple of people that really do this. And uh, and the opportunity that I've been given to work with Hogville, with all those riders, and the more I've gotten to know them uh, and be around them, talking with them, whether it's text messages, DMs, on the phone, whatever, I am, I mean, it's a humbling experience. These guys, they really are legit. I mean, you get, you understand it. I had lunch with the site owner of Hogville, Lanny. Uh, Lanny Lanny is the site owner. Uh, I was there with Otis Kirk, Dudley Dawson, 
We have a photographer, John. I am so excited to be a part of this team. And now they're because of the partnership that I have with them. I, I, I'm I'm literally going to get to go watch something I've tried to do. Talking with the University of Arkansas SID over the football program. And I've failed every time I was on the phone, emails, trying to get that figured out if I get credentials to even just go to a practice. And now look, and uh, that's thanks to Hogville. That's thanks to Lanny. That's thanks to Otis Kirk. Uh, you know, and they brought on Dudley Dawson. That is a hell of a team. I'm just here to comment on it. I'm like the guy that's just, I'm asking them what they think, right? And yeah, I'll still give, I'm still going to do opinion pieces. I'm still going to do edited content, but uh, this has been an awesome journey. It really has. It's not easy. I don't have a college degree. I, I Yeah, I worked in marketing at a store level for Sam's Club, but that's really my only, what would you call that, um, extrovert or, or, or a, a, a only, only line of work where I've actually had to go out and be talkative, right, to kind of spread my wings and fly. And guess what? I was great at it. Uh, and... Um, that's when I understood, wow, I, I should probably look into doing this for a career. And, man, here it is. This is huge. And, and I know some of you get it. The rest of you are like, yeah, whatever. This is – it's it's not easy. It's not easy to just be a content creator and then down the line make it to a point where, oh, my God, I now have – I'm going to be in the press box for games. I'm going to be on the sidelines for practice. I'm going to be around all this, around other big media members who we all know and, and are very well aware of, to be around the staff, which I already have. I went to a camp with Otis a few weeks back. That was an awesome experience. So I am so thankful to Hogville. I'm so thankful for you guys who've helped make this possible. We're slowly but surely getting to a million total views. Patreon is going to be very, very – I Patreon, I've got to grow it here. We're not doing Patreon with Hogville. We're not doing that. Um, you know, and I'm not going to get into any of that stuff with financials over there, but it's the, I, to keep this channel alive and everything, Patreon has got to, it's, it's got to take off. Um, so I'm going to try and push Patreon here as much as I can. But again, super thankful to, to Lanny Beavers, to Otis Kirk, Dudley Dawson, Kevin McPherson, uh, our, our digital marketing Guru Scott, it's incredible. A lot of a lot of hard work. A lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of sacrifice, you know. Straighten up the tie. We got this. We got this. Wouldn't be here without you guys. And I mean that. <clears throat> so, I'm looking forward for what's next. It's awesome. What a ride. The good and the bad. And the bad is water under the bridge. It is. Some of you know what I'm talking about. But uh, my family, you know, my wife, we've had to turn this into a studio room. We've got, you know, we've our kids are making sacrifices for to help make this work. Definitely did not do this on my own. All right. I'm going to go kick some ass later today at this practice. I'm going to do you guys proud. I'm going to do Hogville proud. I'm going to work my ass off to bring you guys great content. Either here, well, definitely here, and on Hogville. 
I'll see you guys around soon. You'll hear from me soon. Woo pig. Go hogs. <laughs>